So today we're going to talk about what we are doing differently this time. This is round two of the Asian 56 egg, egg incubator. Um, in my previous video, we probably got a dozen chicks out of 56 and something went terribly wrong. Ten weren't fertilized, but the rest of them, I had a couple of dozen that just full term and they died. So I went back to my egg supplier and he told me that the temperature was too high. So I've been doing some research and I've been finding out um, how to avoid that as a repeat. And I've come up with some interesting things. One of the things I decided to do at his instruction was to find a place in the home where there were no drafts, no temperature, and humidity changes. So I have them in my laundry room. Laundry going. And I've covered up the vent on the floor so that no air conditioning can get in. And I've even covered it up because, you know, when a hen sits on her eggs, it uh, makes for a nice dark place. Um, but just for this video, I'm going to uncover and show what we have going on here. So the thing that was paramount for us to figure out was temperature. So we needed to calibrate and find out if that temperature there, 31.6 degrees Celsius, was the actual temperature of the eggs. And so what Jeff did was he drilled a hole in here, put a meat thermometer in there so that we could see the air temperature. All right, and so there is some difference. I'd have to go back and calculate. Maybe I'll put that in description, the difference between like 98 degrees and I actually have this thing set at Let's see, like 36.2 degrees, because as we tested, we found out that the temperature inside is optimum when this thing is in between like 97 and 99, so 98 is really good, and when this is set to 90 or 36.2. Now you can imagine when I had it at 38.5. I was frying my little babies, so um, that was way, way, way too high. And what I have also learned is that the egg shell temperature is what you really need to monitor and make sure. And you, when you first put these in, the eggs aren't the same temperature as everything. When you first put all the eggs in, you're going to have a lot of temperature fluctuations. But once, after about 24 hours, once everything settles down, then you want to start making sure. And what the guy that I got my eggs from uh, said was to put one of those little um, temperature, like a thermometer in there that is just the old fashioned kind, one that can just sit down in there and you can just look and see what the temperature is at all times. And what I would add to that is find out what the settings need to be for the eggshell temperature to be 100 degrees. All right. so for mine it ended up being 36.2 degrees celsius um i'll have to convert that later but um let me take the cover off here and see if i can't show right quick I like this is hard to do on video see it's right at 100 right at 100 is where we want it and so the eggshell temperature is much more important it's the same They've done studies and found out that the embryo is actually at 100 degrees when the egg shell temperature is at 100 degrees. So that is what we are going for. And um, that is what is going to make the difference in this hatch. I've already candled these eggs. Um, some of them were unclear. The white ones, I, I couldn't hardly see any of those. There's my alarm. Same, my humidity and temperature are low. Um, those did not appear to be fertilized at all. All the Rhode Island reds were, were fertilized. And then I've got these that are kind of a light brown. They seem to be a mix between the white and the brown. Um, those look pretty good too. But I'm going to have to recandle them and then I'll update as we go. But um, I'm still, the jury's out on how this thing is going to do. But I know now that my temperature was way too high and that you need to get, you need to calibrate the thermometer on any incubator with another source, um, uh, some other thermometer to make sure that they match. And then at some point, um, and I use this laser thermometer, 
to, to, to uh, laser the temperature on um, my eggshells themselves because that is key. All right, so another thing I wanted to add is um, when you're adding water in order to keep the temperature constant, you want the, the water to be about 100 degrees before you add it. I've been adding it in the side here. There's a little hole right there where I can add it without opening it up and disturbing anything. Um, I just found an egg right there that was gross. So I'm gonna have to candle these and see um, what the development is and then I'll report on that. But um, I wanted to add that you don't wanna add cold water to get your temperature or to get your humidity back up. Cause you can see right now with it open, it's not at the optimal 55 degrees and the temperature's going down. But temporarily to candle them, that's fine. But anyway, add warm water. I don't know if you can see this, I'm candling one of the eggs and you can see how it's about half full. That is the chick that is developing. You can kind of see some veins in there, but this is what an egg should look like. We're on day 12 and everything is looking great. I finished candling, turn my candler off, and every single one of the white eggs was not developed. I had two of my brown and two of my light brown that were the same but um, apparently the leghorns were not getting mated something is very wrong there all my roadies my Rhode Island Reds they're all fertile and growing and beautiful and um, those are doing well make sure when you're uh, touching your eggs that you, your hands are really clean and I'm actually going to put um, in the description box the methods that I went through these were poopy covered uh, dirty eggs and um, some people debate on whether or not you're supposed to wash them um, but infection can be a problem if they're covered in poop they got bacteria on them it can infect not only the egg and, and kill the embryo but it can infect other eggs around it so I made the choice and it was a hard choice to um, to wash them and I'm going to put in the description box uh, a playlist that was really helpful for me and uh, he his advice on how to get the best hatch rate out of your eggs um, and, and part of that involves uh, disinfecting them and so I'll let you take a look at those those uh, my, my eggs are doing really well of, of the ones that just weren't fertile all these white ones never had a chance they weren't good so uh, using the method of disinfecting that I'm going to show you guys in the video I only lost two um, two brown and two of the light brown. So let's say four out of, I don't know, maybe 46 that were fertile. I haven't done the, the numbers, but anyway, that's a small number to not develop at this point. The rest of them look very healthy and I'm not happy with my wet ones not being fertile at all. Oh my gosh, that's such a waste. But, um, of the ones that I did wash and I did disinfect and that, um, I made that decision to do. I'm really happy to see the development being normal and all as well. And so I'll update everything. I think the incubator, I've got it figured out what I did wrong. It wasn't the incubator. It was user error and ignorance. And from what I've been told, that's not uncommon when you're, when you're learning the ropes. Um, you never go with what the temperature says on there, even if it's in Fahrenheit, even if... Um, you know, other people review it very highly. You always need to double check with another source um, what the temperature is inside. So that's my advice. This is our progress, and I will update you in the next video. Bye-bye.